I love Arizona, and I am so proud of what we've delivered. Because I choose civility, understanding, listening, working together to get stuff done, I will leave the Senate at the end of this year. Allow me to put my Jenk Uger hat on to say, down goes cinema, down goes cinema. Let's go to Jenk for more. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we got her. Down goes cinema, down goes cinema. All right, guys, by the way, now Mansion and cinema are both gone. Bye. Uh, because they preferred civility, no, they preferred corporate cash. See you later. And the reason why this is such a huge story today is because for the first time in American politics, pleasuring corporate donors has not worked. We won't miss you. Yeah, they're both goners. They both serve their donors 100%. Christmas cinema killed lower drug prices and higher taxes on corporations and the wealthy. She was the most corporate politician of my lifetime, pretending to be a progressive in the beginning, then did a switcheroo, the original Fetterman, mm. and then represented corporate donors better than anyone in the Senate. And guess what? It turns out voters aren't buying that crap anymore. So see you wouldn't want to be you. Yes, politicians be lying, sometimes there's consequences. Now the Arizona Senator has not only announced her retirement today, this also means that Ruben Gallego and Carrie Lake are left to brawl it out for her seat. So we'll see how that plays out. But we did just show you a clip of her announcement video. In that same video, Cinema really wanted to make it clear that she felt that it was wrong, that she wasn't appreciated as much as she deserved to be. So let's take a look at that portion of her announcement. Through listening, understanding and compromise, we delivered tangible results that make America safer, stronger and more prosperous. Yet, despite modernizing our infrastructure, ensuring clean water, delivering good jobs and safer communities, Americans still choose to retreat farther to their partisan corners. These solutions are considered failures, either because they're too much or not nearly enough. It's all or nothing. I mean, why aren't my constituents rewarding me for fighting super hard to pass bills that would give massive federal grants to private corporations to either build, build our infrastructure or privatize some of our public infrastructure? Why, why aren't they thanking me for that, Cenk? Yeah. <laughs> We might have millions of people watching this show, but you can be the difference maker because we just need 1% of our audience to be paid members. And then this show can be around forever. So you can make that difference. Click join now. So she's what she's doing there is classic uh, you know, establishment Democrats, establishment Republicans and establishment media my whole lifetime, which is, well, look, there's these two radical extremes. And I was the one that was reasonable in the middle. That's why I was for, uh, protecting the private equity loophole. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. The private equity loophole is a total crime. It lowers taxes on the richest people in the country totally unjustifiably, treats their income as investments, as coming from investments when it isn't. It's just straight income. It's flat out cheating on behalf of very literally the richest people in the world, okay? So, and how does that poll among Republicans and Democrats? Terribly. Terribly, all Republicans, all Democrats hate it. It is not at all a moderate position. She's in favor of not being able to negotiate drug prices for Medicare and for the government. Which means she's against capitalism, polls terribly among Republican voters. And she's for higher drug prices just so that the drug companies can make more excessive profits off of all of us. Polls terribly, terribly, not anywhere near moderate. But my whole life, mm -hmm. everyone in Washington, including the media, would play along with this game. Well, the moderate Kristen Cinema is, you know, and they, to this day, as she's retiring, they're like the moderate Kristen Cinema. Yeah. No, she's corporate Kristen Cinema. She has nothing to do with moderate positions at all. In fact, she's the one that killed enormously moderate positions like paid family leave, higher minimum wage, etc. I just take offense to her framing in that announcement video because, you know, the other trick that I've seen from corporatist politicians is how they'll jump to arguments uplifting the idea of civility and basically like looking down at so called extremists or partisans. What they're really referring to here is anyone on either side of the political spectrum that has a problem 
with policies that are specifically meant to funnel money from tax paying citizens to corporations that already get all sorts of benefits, tax cuts, loopholes, deductions within our economic system that ordinary working Americans don't get to take advantage of. Look, my problem with the infrastructure bill was the fact that it allowed for huge portions of our public infrastructure, our public lands to be passed to corporations to essentially manage. And that means that certain roads that you are currently using for free will be managed and maintained by corporations, which will do what? They're going to implement a toll or a fee in order to use that infrastructure. They, by the way, your taxpayer money had already paid for uh, building in the, in the, in the beginning, in the, in the first place. And so like, I have a huge problem with the framing of that kind of legislation. But on top of that, listen, I do think there's a problem with the inability of both sides some portions of both sides of the political spectrum having this inability to speak to one another and still respect each other if they disagree on, on policy. But that's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is the vast majority of Americans who are sick of crony capitalism and also the corporatist policies coming out from you know Congress, which is dominated, unfortunately, by politicians like Kirsten Cinema, who likes to present herself as the civil one, when in reality it's not about civility, it's about funneling money from you know the working class to the corporations. Look, if you just look at the uh, how they line up in terms of polling and the, their policy positions, for almost all the corporate Democrats and Republicans, they're actually complete radicals. The American people don't like any of their positions. Uh, so it, the populists are the ones that actually have popular positions. But what does the media and the establishment do in every regard? They paint the moderate people as the radicals and the radical corporatists as the moderates. Right. So I can't, I love that she's gone. There was nothing moderate about her, nothing civil. All she did was sell you out. So what's gonna happen next is two last things. One is how does it affect the Senate race in Arizona? Well, she believes, and she said this in a speech recently, that she was gonna take about 10 to 20% of the vote away from the Democratic candidate and about 25 to 35% away from the Republican candidate, that's Carrie Lake. So when she drops out, according to her own calculation, she's helping deliver more votes to Carrie Lake and the Republicans. Oh, That's interesting because the reporting today following her announcement argued that the Democratic Party is like breathing a sigh of relief. Yeah, it's just a lot of the reporters that cover politics don't know anything about politics. Hmm. Okay, and the last thing is where is she gonna go? Lobbyist? <laughs> Most obvious thing in the world. Consultant? Yeah, either lobbyist or more likely some sort of vague consultant, which is actually just means lobbyist slash we're paying you off for the favors you did for us. Very likely she'll wind up on uh, with a firm on Wall Street because there's no one she helped more than the private equity and hedge fund guys who got to commit trillions of dollars of robbery thanks to her. So they'll reward her with several million dollars a year for basically doing nothing mm. and she'll live happily ever after. So that's the downside of this story. I mean, to be fair, the corporate world was already rewarding her with millions of dollars to do nothing in Congress. So now she's gonna be doing it outside of Congress, but influencing Congress through her yeah. lobbying. Um, I wanted to give you some in more information about uh, the corporate money that flew into her campaign coffers throughout her political career. So. Let me just note that she did in fact do exactly what we're seeing with Fetterman happen in real time. Um, the woman now known as a committed centrist ran for the Arizona legislature nearly two decades ago as a Green Party activist, oh, yeah. protested the Iraq war with code pink, the left wing social justice movement, and once warned of the dangers of capitalism and the almighty dollar, which apparently was just too seductive for her to turn down. So let's take a look at the money. So Forbes had reported that from 2016 to 2021, Kirsten Cinema received donations from 59 billionaires and six spouses of billionaires. But um, <laughs> all but one of them were located outside of Arizona. So you have uh, billionaires from outside of her state uh, giving her money to do what as a United States Senator? 
to pass legislation that benefits the corporate world in America, even if it's to the detriment of her constituents in the state of Arizona. And that's probably the reason why polling showed that she was consistently coming out at third place in the Senate race. So that's, in my opinion, a big reason why she's stepping down or not seeking reelection. She's also taken more than $850,000 from the pharmaceutical industry, and that's a huge reason why she was not in favor of allowing our Medicare system to negotiate drug prices. This is not price fixing, it's simply allowing for Medicare, which we fund through our taxes to negotiate for lower drug prices. So our Medicare system isn't getting ripped off by the pharmaceutical companies, but she was one of the obstacles in passing that type of regulation and allowing for those negotiations to take place. So. Sayonara, we won't miss you, and I hope I never hear from her again. Yes, and understand that every article that calls her centrist or moderate is lying to you. Yeah. Probably not on purpose, these reporters live in their own completely detached from reality bubble, where they think that if you serve corporate interests and further radical ideas that the American people hate, that you are a moderate or centrist. So I'm thrilled that she has exited the building. Good riddance, and we hope to never see you again.